So for the next section, this for some of you might end up being kind of the um, differential equations does not have linear algebra as a prerequisite in our in our system. And I mean, there are reasons for that. The goal I think was to have students take differential equations as soon as possible after calculus. If you had linear algebra as a prereq, you would have a year long gap. So there are reasons for this, but at the same time, we really need some material from linear algebra for differential equation. So we're now in this kind of linear algebra branch course where we don't assume that students have seen matrices or anything like that. And we need to present that material to students. <laughs> so we'll start with a matrix. And a matrix is a rectangle. Angular array of numbers. We could also have matrices of functions, but let's start with numbers. So something like one, two, seven, four, six, three. These six numbers arranged in a rectangle is a matrix. If we, if we just added a two down there, that's not a matrix because it's no longer a rectangular array. So matrices have two pieces of notation. This rectangular array is going to be surrounded by something. It's either going to be surrounded by open parentheses like that, or it's going to be surrounded by closed brackets like that. And this is a rare thing in mathematics. Usually, if you have two different pieces of notation, they represent different things. With matrices, that is, I mean, like interval notation, open parentheses or closed brackets matters. That is not the case here. Open parentheses, closed brackets, a matrix is a matrix. I generally find, um, I generally, I mean, in my real life, I don't know what I do in my notes, but I usually use open parentheses for um, small matrices. But then if I have like a 10 by 10 matrix, I find writing the parenthesis around it really awkward, and I transition to closed brackets. A matrix has rows. So first row, second row. And a matrix has columns. First column, second column, third column. It's often 
very important to talk about the size of a matrix. And when we talk about the size, it's the number of rows first, then the number of columns. So this matrix has two rows and three columns. It is a two by three matrix. If two matrices are, I used the word size there. Size is a fine word, but mathematicians can't be relied on to use a one-syllable word when they could use three syllables. So it's also dimension. If two matrices are of the same dimension, we and add or subtract them. And we do this what we call component wise. Say that you have a two by two matrix, one, two, three, four, plus zero, negative one, negative two, three. So we take the numbers in the same row and the same column. So those are the numbers in the first row and first column. And we add them. And then the numbers in the first row, second column, we add them. Two plus negative one is one. And then so on. Second row, first column, we add them. Three and negative two is positive one. Second row, second column, four and three is seven. And subtraction in exactly the same way. You subtract component wise. We can also multiply any matrix by a real, let me put an asterisk by real number. And the asterisk is indicating that you could also multiply by complex numbers, but I don't think that's going to show up in this class. This process is called scalar multiplication for reasons that we discuss in linear algebra. And you just
when you do multiplication like this, you just take every entry in the matrix and multiply it. Two, four, fourteen, eight, zero, negative four. So we've got addition and we've got scalar multiplication. New definition. A vector is a matrix with, let's keep things simple for this class, a matrix with one column. You could also have vectors with one row, but these are the only vectors we're going to use in a differential equation. So something like this. Although a vector is technically just a special kind of matrix, it usually makes more sense to think of them as being their own object. I guess like in calculus, you can think of a you can think of a constant as being a constant function, and every time you have a constant, you now have to use the product rule. I mean, it will work, but it really is easier not to think of constants in that way. And usually it makes more sense to think of vectors as their own special thing rather than as a special kind of matrix. So I said that we can add and subtract matrices of the same size. Um, I think the natural next question would be, can we multiply and or divide them? Let's start by approaching multiplication in the special case where we have a matrix times a vector. And I assume that all of you have seen this notation in calculus three or somewhere, but just on the off chance, if you haven't, we often denote vectors with a little line above them. In printed stuff, vectors are usually bolded, but that's pretty inconvenient when writing on a whiteboard. So we're going to learn to multiply matrices by vectors in that order. Order matters here. The vector has to be to the right of the matrix. Furthermore, we have a dimensional requirement. If A is an M by N matrix, so M rows and N columns, then to do this multiplication, the vector has to have N rows. So these inner dimensions have to be the same. Otherwise, the multiplication isn't defined. A matrix times a vector is another vector. 
And this vector is going to get its dimensions. It's going to be m by one. It's going to get its dimensions from the outer dimension. So the inner dimensions have to match. The outer dimensions give the size of the product. How is this multiplication done? I mean, I've said we can do it, but how? Well, in linear algebra, we all, it often sort of makes sense to think of a matrix as being kind of a vector storage unit. You can think of this matrix as being basically three vectors sitting next to each other. And if we take this matrix and we multiply it, I find that the parenthesis notation really awkward for vectors. If we take this and we multiply it by a vector, well, first of all, we can do this. I mean, this is two by three. This is three by one. Those inner dimensions match. We're going to end up with a two by one vector. And the way, the way this multiplication is defined, I'm going to say this is not intuitive. I don't think anyone in this room, including me, would just come up with this naturally. If someone said, how do you think we should define this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first column of the matrix, and we're going to take the first entry of the vector, and we are going to scale them, multiply them together. And then we'll take the second column of the matrix, tricks and the second and three of the vector and we'll scale or multiply those together finally you can perhaps recognize a pattern we'll take the third column of the matrix and the third and three of the vector and we will scale or multiply those together. And then we'll take these expressions and we'll add them all up. So the, this first um, product plus the second product, well, we've already got subtraction here. So minus that third product. And this is whatever it is, some um, one, two, plus six, eight, minus 15, zero is six plus one is seven, minus 15 is negative eight. Two plus eight minus zero is ten. 
So that's how you multiply a matrix by a vector. Um, where this definition comes from, we're not going to finish our linear algebra crash course today. We will, well, obviously, depending on the weather, but we'll hopefully be able to finish it up on Thursday. Um, so where this definition comes from, I mean, I think it will make more sense once we've talked about vector equations. For now, let me you might have seen matrix vector multiplication defined before. And you might have seen it defined in a different way. So let's briefly talk about that. Um, there is a way to define matrix vector multiplication, basically using dot products. Um, assuming that in Calc 3 or something, you've seen dot products before. But this is two by three. This is three by one. So the result of this product is going to be a two by one. Remember that the outer dimensions give the dimension of the product. And we can find this product as follows. Take, so here is the first row. So we're going to take the first row of the matrix and we're going to take that vector and we're going to line them up. We're going to take that row and flip it so that it's vertical. And we're going to set it next to that vector. And we are going to multiply these component wise. One times one is one, two times two is four, seven times three <laughs> is 21. And then we're going to take those numbers and we're going to add them. And we're going to get that first row. So we're going to get 26. And then we can repeat this process with the second row. And um, if the definition if the definition we gave on this frame didn't seem entirely intuitive, I feel like this definition just seems completely alien. So um, I don't think this is a good way to define matrix vector multiplication because it's not going to end up giving any intuition about what this multiplication is or why we care about it. But assuming that you have kind of small matrices and small vectors and nice numbers, this does tend to be much faster to do matrix vector multiplication. 
assuming again that everything is nice enough that you can do it in your head. Three times one is three. Two times two, I have the eraser. <laughs> I did, did not mean to erase that two. Three times one is three, plus two is five, plus 12 is 17. And again, one times one is one, four, 21. One plus four is five, plus 21 is 26. And that is, I mean, that's definitely faster than doing the multiplication like this, because if you're doing this, you really have to write everything out. You can't just do steps in your head. So even if it's not very intuitive or a very natural way of thinking about matrix vector multiplication, it is good to know just sort of for speed purposes. And also because it's quite famous. I mean, if they're going to be mathematicians or teaching math to high school students, this is a pretty this is something you really should have in your, <laughs> in your toolbox. Okay, we'll finish this hopefully on Thursday, but 